Alright, and fo folks, I'm back with the what I hope to be the last video for Elec and Mag. I wanted to do it in five. Uh, this is the sixth video. So, we looked at the electromagnet, then we looked at the DC motor. Now we have to look at the AC generator. Now, the generator is built similar in, in similar fashion to the um, motor. You'll see shortly. You have a magnet. You have a coil. I like to say the coil looks like a spatula. And you have your uh, your commutator. you have a variable resistor now this is where the generator is different from the motor you see a motor uses current to produce motion a generator uses motion to produce current so let me label this quickly um, coils variable resistor and a commutator commutator so how does it work it works based on a principle called e electromagnetic induction I N D U C T I O N. now we looked at electromagnetism where a flowing current causes a magnetic field this is the reverse a magnetic field creates a flowing current this is done or this happens when a conductor is passed through or cuts a magnetic field let me go that over again Electromagnetic induction is the opposite of electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is the process by, well, it occurs when a flowing current produces a magnetic field. Electromagnetic induction is the opposite. A magnetic field creates a flowing current. Now, the process. P R O C E S S by which an electric current is made to appear a P P E A R in a conductor. This is electromagnetic induction. Now this is going to sound totally insane, but the generator needs a motor. Right, a generator needs a motor. You see, something has to turn these coils in this magnetic field. These coils are not going to turn by themselves. All right, so you turn the coils in the field, and as the coils pass through the magnetic field, a current is created in them, and that's it literally. That's it. That is how a generator works. So let me add that um, yeah as the coils is this the right shade no it's not it's the lighter shade of uh, da -da -da -da. this is yellow this is gold as the coils rotate rotate in the field I could say a current is induced in them and alternating a l t e r n a t i n g current is induced in them 
That's literally how it works. Now, remember for motors, we used the Fleming's left hand rule where this was motion, the thumb was motion, the index finger was the magnetic field, and this middle finger was the current that flowed through the coils of the motor. Well, for generators, it is the right hand rule, and it is the opposite of the left hand rule. Well, the fingers basically still mean the same thing. Your um, thumb is the direction in which you move the coils, still motion. Your index finger is still the magnetic field. Um, the index, I N E E X, middle finger, M I D D L E. This is the direction of the induced current. I N D U C E D, induced current. I should write the word out. Current, C U R R E N T. So this is the right hand, R-I-G-H-T, H-A-N-D, the right hand or generator rule. Well, I should put Fleming's, F-L-E-M-I-N-G, apostrophe S. This is Fleming's left hand. Or motor rule, M O T O R R U L E. So that's 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 it. Um, if we had a magnetic field going from left to right, like this, and we decided that this is the conductor. <laughs> And we would move our conductor up through the magnetic field. You can use the Fle the Fleming's. You can use the, you could use Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of the current induced in the conductor. Your thumb should be pointing up. Your index finger should be pointing to the right. The direction I got for current is going away from me, which is the X. I am moving the conductor down. My thumb should be pointing down. Yes, you'd have to bend your hand in a really weird position for this. Thumb pointing down, finger pointing across, index finger pointing across. My middle finger will be pointing towards me. So that means current is coming to me. That's a dot. And this is how we apply the rule. This is literally how we apply the rule. Your thumb is the motion or direction of motion, your index finger is the direction of the magnetic field, and your middle finger is the direction of the induced current. This is Fleming's right hand rule. Now, I did not, for the DC motor, explain the purpose of the commutator. The commutator has a simple function, and that is to keep current flowing in one direction. That's literally what it does. You see, if, and I need my diagram for this, if I got rid of the commutator, right, and I just straight connected these two wires here, like this, what would happen after a while, after this coil, let's say the coil is turning like this, after a while these wires would, it would look like you're twisting here. And eventually, the coils would not be able to rotate. The purpose of the commutator is twofold, to allow the coils to rotate and to basically, well, yeah, it, it keeps, 
it allows the coils to rotate and it keeps current flowing smoothly or in in some cases in in well in mm, let me just write it down let me just write it down it's easier that way saying all this stuff off the top of your head especially when you're conscious of the fact that you're recording is kind of you know i don't want to say scary but it makes you it makes me at least pause sometimes a bit too much all right the commutator in the um in the dc motor it has two functions all right two functions the first function is it keeps current flowing in one direction second thing it does is that it allows coils to rotate freely F R E E L Y right now this second function is also shared by the AC generator DC motor, AC generator. This brings me to an interesting little point. Why is this AC? And why is this DC? Now, this all goes back to what we are trying to accomplish. You want, under most normal circumstances, your motor to rotate in a fixed direction. You don't want your motor to rotate one way for a, a short period of time and then switch directions. You really don't want that. Most applications that involve motors, you want it spinning in one direction. And that is why you use direct current. You see an AC waveform, mean straight lines, an alternating waveform. Like I said earlier, when we were looking at rectification, it changes direction. So if you use AC instead of good old fixed DC, your motor is going to rotate one direction. Let me use a different color. It's going to rotate in uh, one direction here, and then it's going to rotate in another direction here. Then it'll go back to that direction, and then it'll go back to this direction. And so your motor will be literally rotating 180 degrees, essentially. 180 degrees in one direction, 180 degrees back in the opposite direction. And that's not really what you want. You want it to consistently rotate in one direction. Please note, I never said you don't want it to change direction. Most times you just don't want it to change direction that fast. Now, back to the AC generator. The reason you only get AC out of a generator is straightforward. Let's assume this is our magnetic field. And that this funky blue line is our coil. Now, what happens is, if you go back, if you think back to the definition of electromagnetic induction, it is the process by which a current is made to appear in a conductor when that conductor cuts a magnetic field or, or passes through a magnetic field. When the conductor is like this, this straight blue line, this boring blue line, it is not really cutting any it, it is in the magnetic field but it's not cutting a lot of the magnetic field if however I flipped it like this let me draw a couple more lines let me draw a couple more lines see more field lines yes. in position A it is not cutting a lot of the magnetic field in position B it is cutting a whole lot of the magnetic field. So you see, if we are rotating our coil in the magnetic field, what happens is you're going to have points at which the coil cuts a lot of the field. Those are our peaks. Positive peaks, and you could call these negative peaks. Of course, that's a very crude statement, but get the point and then you have your moments in the middle where your field 
doesn't cut sorry your coil doesn't cut much uh, your coil doesn't cut much of the field when this happens <clears throat> when this happens you have your low moments your moments of little to no current so if you think about it these are a and b a and b are the two um, extreme positions the coil can have in the magnetic field and the current produced varies between them here you get enough many and plenty current here and eh, not so much so that is why a generator only produces AC and the DC motor only operates on DC that was just general knowledge um, the last thing we have to look at under this section is the transformer no not those transformers F-O-R-M-E-R-S a transformer according to some of my students is a square donut <sighs> yes QC children at their finest the square donut is used as a transformer we have our input our primary coils and we have our output or secondary coils So, the operation of the transformer is simple. First of all, it only operates on alternating current. We Good. AC. As this AC flows into this primary coil, P-R-I-M-A-R-Y, S-E-C-O-N-D-A-R-Y, as the AC flows into the primary coil, it creates a magnetic field. Now, the magnetic field matches the current meaning it varies with the current the magnetic field matches the current so as the current increases your magnetic field increases outwards as your current falls your magnetic field collapses inwards your magnetic field fluctuates alternates varies whatever word you want to use to describe it just like the current this varying field cuts these coils, the secondary coils. Now, please, don't think that the primary coils are in Georgetown and the secondary coils are in Vreden Hoop. It's not, a transformer is not that big. All of, no, no, I've never known a transformer to be that big. The coils are close enough to allow the changing field produced by the primary coil to cut the secondary coil. All right? When this happens, a current is induced in the secondary coils electromagnetic induction and the induced current matches the changes or variations of the of the current flowing through the primary coils that's literally how it works current in creates a magnetic field magnetic field varies magnetic field varies cuts the secondary coils and induces in the secondary coils a varying current as well what can be different is the magnitude or size of this current now um, according to my students pout is equal to pin power out is equal to power in the output power is IV but to indicate that it is it is the output power we use s for secondary and pin the input power literally i wrote p out and p in and my students said pout and pin again goons are incredible so this is ip and is sorry ip and vp I, what is wrong with me vp vp okay so this is where everything starts vs over vp is an important ratio this is equal to ip over is now the most important ratio is this one it is the ratio of output voltage to input voltage and this determines what type of transformer you have okay 
this determines the type of transformer that you have. I could move this. Yeah, let me move it, put it here. Good. So, if Vs over Vp, if this is greater than 1, we have what is called a step up transformer. Not step up the movie, step up the transformer. Basically, what this is saying is that you get output being greater than input. You get more out than you put in. If Vs over Vp is less than 1, it implies that this is a step down transformer. And your output is less than your input. Finally, for transformers, we add one more thing. NS over NP. This, this is called the turns ratio, T-U-R-N-S ratio. And the same thing applies here and here. If you have more turns on the output, you get more output. If you have less turns on the output, you get less output. And this is the end of Transformers. Thank God. The only thing left is to make a single video on logic gates, which I will do now so that I don't have any other videos to make. Oh, this has been a rough process. I grossly underestimated the amount of work it would take to make these videos. Father. Anyways, um, y'all yeah, take care, stay sane, stay safe. Again, thank you for all the likes, the support. Thank you for looking at the videos. Um, you have no idea how scared I was. Not scared, skept yeah, scared and skeptical I was to do this, but I like the response so far. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.